What's up everybody? Dr. Scott Jan from drscottjan.com and in this video I'm going to teach you how to heal your herniated or bulging lumbar discs. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing we need to do is understand how this happened. Now, your lumbar discs are located right between two vertebrae and normally these vertebrae sit right on top of each other and when that's the case they provide equal amount of pressure along the entire disc. Now, if your lumbar vertebrae slips out of a proper alignment, either through bad posture, sitting too long, or micro traumas, you get undue uh, pressure on one side versus the other. And left uncorrected over time, this causes a slow deterioration of these outside rings of the disc. And then eventually, it'll get weak enough where it'll create an outpouching, and that's called a bulge. And if it still continues, it'll cause a herniation, which is a tear. So the place that it tears most is on the posterior lateral side right here. Your anterior side has a nice strong ligament and so does your posterior side, so they're protected. But the posterior lateral side is left vulnerable and that's where we get our outpouching and we get our herniated disc as you can see right here. So how are we going to heal this? Well, we're going to do six different things, all right? And stay with me throughout this entire video. I promise you it'll be worth it. So here are the six things you need to do to heal your herniated disc. The first is you need to realign those bones, okay? A uh, bone that's stuck out of a proper alignment, called a subluxation, is gonna do number one, create undue amount of pressure on that disc, which is gonna keep re-injuring it. Number two, it's gonna prevent something called imbibition. Now, imbibition is the way the discs get nutrients in and gets waste products out. You see, discs don't have their own blood supply, so they need to create a negative pressure by the vertebrae above and below moving, which means that they can't be subluxated and stuck uh, in a improper position. They need to be able to move properly to bring fluid in and bring waste products out. Think of it like a plunger on a stuck drain. You're going to drive fluid in, bring fluid out. Drive fluid in, bring fluid out. Now, if you stick towards the end of this video, I'm going to show you an excellent exercise that's going to help you do just that. Okay, after we talk about realignment, Next, we want to talk about decompression. I'm going to give you six different exercises to help decompress those discs. Decompression is probably one of the most important things you need to do here because we're trying to force that jelly back into the center of the disc, which we're going to call a donut, right? We're going to force it back in, and we're going to do that through six different exercises. Now, you don't need to do all six. Pick one that works best for you and stick with that one. After decompression, we're going to have to reposition the jelly in the middle of that donut and that disc, okay? And we're going to do that through an exercise called the McKenzie exercise. Finally, uh, we're going to talk about stabilization of the uh, muscles. Now, there are two muscles that are key here. One is called your transverse abdominis, which is located on either side of your rectus abdominis, that six-pack that everybody loves. And the other is called the multifidus. Now, that's the deepest layer of the spine that's going to connect these little vertebrae one to another. And what happens is, if these multifidus that are stuck here, if they don't fire properly, you get what's called a subluxation. The bone moves out of its proper alignment, and then we get problems. Now, there's a bigger muscle called an erector spinae, which covers a large area of the low back. And when these multifidus don't fire properly, that erector spinae tries to stabilize that joint. Unfortunately, it does a very poor job at this because it is a multi-joint exercise. So you get a lot of spasm, you get a lot of inflammation, and you get a lot of pain, all right? So we're gonna reignite those multifidus muscles, all right? And then we're also gonna talk about imbibition. Now, imbibition is a way to help keep healthy discs. Imbibition should be done by everybody, especially anybody over 40. And we're gonna show you how to do that towards the end of this video. And then finally, we can't uh, talk about healing discs without talking about providing the good building blocks, the nutrition needed to rebuild those discs. So let's get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about realignment. Now, realignment, unfortunately, can't be done at home. You need a chiropractor, an osteopath to, to get that, that step done, all right? After that, the others can all be done at home. So we're gonna talk about decompression, right? Now, we got six different exercises to help you decompress those discs. Now, you don't have to do all six. Find one that works for you and stick with that one, all right? Some of them are gonna be done on the floor. Sometimes people have a hot low back and they can't get on the floor, so one's gonna be done in a chair and two are gonna be done on a bed. So find which works best for you and stick with it. So for many people who have hot low back or inflamed discs, it's hard to get on the floor. So this exercise is to be done in a chair. Okay. Again, we're trying to create traction in the low back to help suck that jelly back into the donut that is the disc. And the way you're going to do this, you're going to find a chair that has arms on it 
and you're just going to lift up and you're going to hold here for about 10 seconds and drop back down. Now if that's too easy or you want a little bit more of a challenge, you lift up and you bring your legs out so that you're supporting your full weight and pull, your gravity is pulling down on that disc. Hold it for 10 seconds and drop back down for 5 seconds. You go up, hold it for 10 seconds and drop that back down. Now when you're in the up position, you should feel a little pull on the low back and that's exactly what we're looking for. We do 20, 20 repetitions of these three times a day. Now getting out of the chair is going to be an important step as well. Okay? Most times people get out of the chair using a flex back, which is what we don't want. So we don't want you getting out of the chair like this because now your back is in a, in a rounded flex position and you're going to be pushing that pressure back into the herniated disc, inflaming it even worse. So when we get out of a chair, we want to keep our back nice and straight. Okay, you can use the armrest to help you. You're going to lift up and you're going to get up like that. So for this exercise, get on your bed and you're going to come towards the edge of the bed and what you're going to do is you're just going to hang off the edge and you're going to let gravity help separate your low back. Now, the more stretch you want, you're going to start to slowly inch forward more and more and you're going to let your body just hang down. Okay, this will be too easy. You just scooch out a little further and hang down again. You should get to the point where you can hang down and put your forearms down on the ground and you're just hanging off. Your rib cage should be off the bed and your back should be flat and you create a nice little pull. You're going to stretch and hang like this for about 10 seconds. Then push yourself up, relax for five, and then come back into a stretch. The reason why we're doing this in a 10 and 5 uh, second intervals is because we're trying to create imbibition. And what we're trying to do is, as we come down, we create a negative pressure which pulls the fluid into the disc. But after about 10 seconds or so, that pressure equalizes. And so it's no longer effective. So we come back up, we decrease the pressure, and again, we're creating more pressure again as we come back down. So it creates a pumping effect for the disc. And when you're going to come up, walk yourself back and back onto the bed. So this next exercise is a variation of uh, the last one we did of hanging our, our body off. Only this time we're going to hang our lower body off. Now we're going to add some pillows to it so we can keep our lumbar spine nice and flat. You're going to come down, hips stay off of the pillows, and you hang off the edges like this and try and bring your legs to where they're, they're just hanging down because we're trying to create a gravity that's going to pull your lumbar spine apart. Okay? Um, if that's too much, you can be up on your legs to help support a little bit, but ultimately you want to just kind of let the legs hang and try and open up and separate that space. And as always, we're going to try and count to 10 and then come up and relax and then come back down again after a five second rest. Okay, trying to create that pumping action into the disc. We're going to do 20 repetitions three times a day. So for this exercise, you're going to find yourself uh, either a couch or an ottoman or something where you can bend your legs about 90 degrees. What you're going to do is you're going to take your hands and you're going to bring them down as low as you can into that hip joint, right about here. Now, you're going to try and create a traction by pushing down on your legs, but you're going to be pushing down and up. So the movement looks like this. Hold it for 10 seconds and relax. So we're down in our hips. Push and up. Hold and relax. Relax for five seconds. Push down and up. Hold for 10 seconds and relax. So when you're finished, we want to get up and we want to get up in a safe manner so that we're not rounding our back. So I'm going to bring your legs over. Okay, I'm going to get up just like we did before. Okay. I'm going to come up to all fours. Okay, bring one leg up and stand up like that. Okay. 
Okay, so for this exercise, you're gonna need a doorway, right? You're gonna position yourself so that you're gonna use a stick of some sorts, and you're gonna put the stick in the doorway, and you're gonna lower your body down so that your arms are slightly flexed. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly extend your arms, which is gonna create traction in your low back. You're gonna hold that for 10 seconds, and then you're gonna relax for five seconds. Again, push, hold for 10 seconds, and relax for five seconds. Now, once you get the hang of this, you're gonna find yourself a little towel, a little hand towel, and you're gonna put it under your sacrum. The sacrum is located right here. So you're gonna put the towel right there. It's gonna give us a little bit more traction. We'll grab our dowel again position ourselves so that we can get good traction. We're going to push, hold, and relax. Push, hold, and relax. You're going to do about 20 repetitions of these and do it three times a day. So once you finish the, doing these, there's an art to getting up. We want to make sure that we don't flex the low back because then we're going to start to uh, cause a protrusion in the disc bulge again. So the way you get up, you have to remove your towel, is you're going to roll to your side. You put one hand here. You're going to push and come up from here. Come up to all fours. Lift up. And stand up like that. Okay? We never want to bend that way because it's going to push that disc out further into the neurological structures and cause pain. All right, guys. So you've done your decompression and you've stuck, pulled that fluid back into the disc. Now it's time to reposition that jelly in that donut towards the front end. Now we said that the uh, herniated disc or bulge is towards the posterior lateral side. So we need to push it towards the front to allow it to heal itself. And the way we're going to do that is do what's called the McKenzie exercise. Now you see, when vertebrae are in a flex position, when we sit too long and we're slouched over, we have bad posture, the vertebrae go in a flex position, which puts pressure on the anterior part of the disc and pushes all the fluid back in the posterior section where our herniated or our bulging disc is. So we need to do the opposite. We need to go into an extension so we can extend the back of the vertebrae together to push that fluid forward and take pressure off of the neurological structures, which is causing us pain. Okay, ready to get started? Let's go. So we're going to start on our elbows, okay? You're going to keep your hips on the ground, and you're just going to lift up in this position right here. So we're going to go as high up as you comfortably can without reproducing your symptoms, and you're going to hold that. You're going to hold it for about 30 seconds, and then you come back down. Now, once that gets too easy, you put your hands here, and you come up like this. And again, Keep the hips on the ground. We don't want to see any of this. Hips stay on the ground, and we're just extension of the low back. Okay? Sometimes it helps to imagine a rope attached to your chest, and it's being pulled forward. So as we come up, chest pulls forward, and we hold that. 30 seconds, and come down. Now, you're going to do three, re uh, three sets of the, or three repetitions, I'm sorry. So up 30 seconds, down, rest for about 15, 20 seconds. Do that three times. All right, guys. So you've done your decompression. You've done your repositioning. Now it's time to stabilize those two muscles that we talked about, the transverse abdominis as well as the multifidus. We're going to start with the transverse abdominis, and then we're going to go to our multifidus. Now, work within your limits because we don't want to overextend. When we're doing these exercises, you want to work about 30% of your strength. Well, this is not an all or nothing uh, gain, right? About 30% contraction is all we need to engage the muscle. We're not trying to actually bodybuild or build these muscles. What we're trying to do is we're trying to create a neurological response. We're trying to get the brain to engage those muscles. And that is all that is needed. So only 30% when we're engaging these muscles, okay? Let's go. Okay, so now that you've done <clears throat> the spinal knee compression and the McKenzie exercise, it's time to re-engage your lower core stabilization muscles. Now there's two muscles we need to address. 
One is called the transverse abdominis, and the other one's called the multifidus. So this exercise is for the transverse abdominis. Now, both these muscles are spinal stabilizers. They're not mover exercises. So in the case of the abdominis, we have that six pack, which is called the rectus abdominis that everybody knows and loves so much. That's why we do crunches, because they tend to bring the pelvis and the ribcage closer together. But what we're after here is the transverse abdominis, which is located on the side. Now again, these are stabilizers, they're not movers. So we're not gonna have any movement with this. So the first thing we wanna do is find what's called pelvic neutral. And the way you do that is you're gonna rock your pelvis back and forth. You're gonna create a big arch and then you're gonna flatten it and you're gonna come about halfway between those. And that's where your pelvis should be. What we're gonna do is find the, what's called the ASIS, those two pointy parts of the top of your hip and put your hands just on top of them here and here. And you're gonna engage this exercise, this, this muscle, by doing what's called the Kegel. And the way you do a Kegel, the best way to describe it is if you could imagine that you were um, on the toilet going to the bathroom, number one, if you were urinating, and midway through, you had to stop your urination. You're gonna use those pelvic floor muscles and pull them up, which is gonna stop the urination. If you don't know what I'm talking about, the next time you have to go to the bathroom, midstream, try and stop your urination, okay? And then you'll, you should know what I'm, we're talking about. So hands will go on your transverse abdominis and you're gonna contract those pelvic floor muscles, the Kegel exercise. You're gonna hold it for about five seconds. Try and hold it, hold it, hold it, and then you're gonna relax. What you're trying to feel for under your hands is a slight contraction, okay? Your uh, muscles should contract slightly in towards the center, okay? And relax. So we're gonna do 10 repetitions of this three times a day. Once you're able to do it on the ground, then we're gonna try and do it in a, uh, a more challenging position. We're gonna come over on all fours, find our pelvic neutral, and same thing, Kegel, contract, and relax. Okay. Once you get the hang of this, you'll notice that your posture is gonna get much better. When you're sitting, you're not gonna have that slouch position, which is gonna be protective of that low back and help you heal that disc a lot quicker. One of the most important muscles that we need to re-engage is called the multifidus. Right? The multifidus are little spinal stabilizer muscles that attach to the vertebrae. Okay? You have three layers of muscles on your back. The multifidus is the the deepest layer, the next layer is a layer called the erector spinae. And the erector spinae are more uh, multi-joint muscles. So when the multifidus isn't working to stabilize the individual vertebrae, the multifidus takes over. And like I said, those are multi-joint uh, muscles, so they tend to spasm and cause back pain. So it's very important that we re-engage our multifidus muscle. And the way we do that is we find where the muscle is, which is the middle of the spine is here, we just go to each side, and you're gonna put your thumbs, you're gonna depending on what your level is, and it take, take a little bit of uh, challenge to figure out what the level is, but if you're gonna feel right and left side, and there should be somewhere between here and here. Uh, most typically it's between L4, L5, L5, S1. L4 is at the top of the pelvis, which is here. So L4, L5 is here, L5, S1 is here. You put your, hand, your thumbs on either side. What you're gonna do is you're gonna feel the tension of the muscle, and you're gonna bend forward until you feel the muscle tense up, right about there, okay? Now we back up and we feel it relax. Now keeping your thumbs on there, now try and tighten that muscle and then relax it. You're gonna tighten the muscle again. A good way to describe it is if you're trying to feel like your back is squeezing together. Now as we said before, with the transverse abdominis, there's a stabilizer muscle. So there's no actual movement in this muscle. We're just trying to engage it. We're trying to create a neurological pathway from the brain to that muscle to re-engage it. And you're using your thumbs to feel for an engagement. So hands back on there, okay? And just try and squeeze it. If you're having a hard time, again, go into that forward position and engage. If you feel one side is more tense than the other, when we're in that forward position, stay in that position and try and squeeze that. We'll say the right side is not working as far, much as the left. I'm in a forward flex position, and I try and just squeeze that left side. It's gonna take a little bit of practice, but eventually you'll re-engage that muscle. Last thing I should mention is when we're in that forward position, we're bending from the hips, not from the back, right? Anybody that's got any kind of a disc issue, forward flexion is your biggest enemy. So try and keep the back straight, 
and just flex from the hip. You feel the engagement and try and squeeze that muscle. All right, so we've done our decompression. We've done our repositioning. We've done our stabilization. Now let's talk about imbibition. Now, when we talk about imbibition, Right? We want to make sure that we are moving those vertebrae back and forth, side to side, to help pull fluid and pump that nutrition into the disc and pull out waste products. So we're going to use something called a stability disc. Ready to take a look? Let's go. Now, another great way to get imbibition or get fluid to be pumped into that disc and good nutrients into that disc and waste products out is with a stability disc. It looks like this. Okay, and the way it works is you're going to put it on a chair. You're going to sit down on that chair and you're gonna rock your pelvis forward, create a nice arch in your pelvis, hold that for about five seconds, and then come back to neutral. Rock forward, hold for about five seconds, come back to neutral. Do 10 times for the forward, and neutral, then 10 times to one side, and neutral, 10 times to the other side, and neutral. Now, if you have a herniated disc and you know where it is, either through symptoms or through an MRI, like let's just say it's on the right side. So we want to make sure we rock to that side, right? So that we're pushing the fluid to the other side and back to neutral. Rock to the right side and back to neutral. We're gonna, not gonna rock to the left side because we don't want to push that fluid back into that, that bulge or that herniation. So just either forward and now, if I'm doing it this way, herniation's on this side, and we're pushing the fluid that way. Herniation's on this side, we're doing it this way, pushing that way. We try and keep our upper body straight when we do it, back to neutral. Right. All now, no talk of healing discs can be complete without discussing nutrition. Now, number one, we have to get the inflammation under control. When your body's inflamed, it is not healing. So our primary job is to control that inflammation. After that, we need to provide the proper building blocks to help rebuild those discs, right? And we're gonna use that imbibition that we just got done doing to help bring that nutrition inside the discs. Now, this is gonna be a little bit uh, dry, so instead of me just rambling on uh, nutrition, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a, uh, a link in the description to uh, my anti-inflammatory protocol, as well as my nutrition for healing a herniated or a bulging disc protocol. You'll find those down in the description uh, part of this uh, message. All right, so take a look. One of the major problems we have with healing discs is that they're constantly under stress because uh, people are usually in a flex position when we're sitting too long or bad posture or whatnot. And I wanna show you what I mean by using model these two vertebrae, we're going to use this balloon as our makeshift disc. So if we put this balloon between the discs, okay, so what we have here is an example of two lumbar vertebrae, and we're going to use this balloon as our disc. You can see in the model we have this plastic part as a disc, but we're going to use our balloon because I want to illustrate what happens when we move. So when we go into flexion, which is this way, and if we look at the balloon, you can see how it starts to bulge out towards the back. And that's where all your neurological structures are, your spinal cord and the spinal nerves that come out the back. We go into extension and we push down. You can see that the balloon starts to puff out in the front, which is a much better condition for us to remove irritation on the nerves. So what we're going to do is we're going to tape the back in such a way to prevent flexion. Right? People get into flex positions when they're sitting for long periods of time or do bad posture or other bad habits. Okay, so let's begin. I'm gonna show you a taping style. And what you're gonna need is two different kinds of tape. This is a, a tape that's not gonna to stick to the skin or pull it off. And then this is an athletic tape, which is much stronger. Okay, so we're gonna first put down the, um, the regular tape and then we're gonna back it up with the athletic tape because it's a much stronger uh, tape. We're gonna use a alcohol to clean the skin so the tape will stick for a lot longer. And you'll also need a pair of scissors. All right, let's get started. Okay, so when we tape, what we want to do is we want to find the top of the pelvis and we also want to find where the bottom of the ribs come. So we're going to be taping in right about here to keep this lumbar spine from going into flexion when we're either trying to get up from a seated position or if we're seated too long or from bad posture. So the first thing we need to do is we need to clean off the space from any kind of oils on the skin. And we're going to use just an alcohol solution. 
And that's going to help it stick a lot better. Okay, so now that we got the area clean, we're going to start with our tape that's not a very strong adhesive because we don't want to irritate the skin. And we're going to lay down two strips. I'm going to lay down one strip here. And we're going to lay down one on the other side as well. Now next we're going to back that up with the stronger tape. Which is our athletic tape. I'm going to use a scissor because it is a little bit tougher. And I'm just going to put that right on top. Same thing on the other side. That one goes right on top as well. Okay, so now we got our two anchor strips. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create an X pattern. So we'll measure it out. We put one strip across one way. And one across the other way. And again, we're going to back that up with the stronger tape. So this is the basic pattern. Now you can back this up with another strip here, another strip here, one more X. But this is the basic pattern that you want to have, okay? So here's our pattern, right? And you'll, you'll see that when Erica flexes forward, flex, this tape will start to give a little pull. Now it's not designed to actually prevent her from flexing forward. It's designed to give her some resistance to remind her to stay in an upright position. It'll provide a little bit of support, but the main purpose of uh, the tape is just to remind her to keep herself in a straight back or an extended position, all right? Which will allow her disc to heal a lot faster. All right, guys, for those of you that stuck with me, congratulations. I know it was a lot of information, but luckily you can rewind this and play it as much as you want. All right, let's recap. We talked about realigning the vertebrae. We talked about decompression, and I gave you six different exercises to try out and see which one works best for you. We talked about repositioning through the McKinsey exercise. Very valuable. We talked about stabilization. Now, the two key muscles here are the multifidus and the transverse abdominis. Okay, and I gave you some exercises for those. And then we talked about imbibition using our spinal stability disc. And then finally, we talked about nutrition, which you'll find in the link in the, com uh, in the description below. Okay? I hope you uh, enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it. And please think about subscribing because we're going to be putting out a lot more content. And that means I'm going to be giving a giveaway once we get 1,000 subscribers. So if you're a subscriber and you like this video, once I hit 1,000, I'm going to be giving away five of these stability discs uh, at the only catch is you need to be in the Philippines because that's where I am and I don't want to have to ship these to the United States, to Europe and all over God's green earth. All right. So like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.